We now talk about converting customers, particularly with landing pages and forms. So let's cover the best practice as it applies to these two important types of pages where you, you are trying to push people through a process. So landing pages, you would typically want to create dedicated landing pages for media campaigns. If you've got lots of media campaigns, then you choose some. You choose the most important, either from terms of profitability or volume or reputation. It's your business, you decide. And a, cam a, a campaign page for a, media, for, for a media campaign would have these features. It prioritizes conversion above all else. Because someone has just clicked on an advert, effectively, to get to this page, you already know what they want. They've clicked on a display banner for a particular product, or they've clicked on a paid search advert for a particular product. So all that this page has to do is sell them that one thing and maybe reassure them that you're not a complete fly-by-night operation. That's about it. If you're, you, know, you don't really need to be, be, be presenting them with the whole beautiful smorgasbord of stuff that you're doing. So remove or minimize other navigation. Just chuck it out. You can include a link to home if you want, or view full site, or whatever you want to call it. And in, 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 in the top left is a text link, something along those lines. But all the rest of the navigation that you would have going on, the breadcrumbs, etc., that you would have going on on your regular site, strip that out. All that this page is about is about selling this one thing and getting them to hit the button and convert or do whatever it is that you want them to do. You can, if you want to include a form on the page, so that if you only need three or four fields to fill in, to get someone to download a white paper or ask for more details or get a brochure mailed to them, whatever it is, consider having the form on the page so they don't have to click through to then see the form. Why have that extra step? Just have that form right, right there and then so that all they need to do is fill this in and hit go. Make the benefits clear and relevant so your sales message should be well written. And well written means writing for the web, which means front loading, concision, using the, using the language of the audience, all that sort of thing. We, we just talked about um, front loading and the value of that with those links for the British Legion example in the, in the navigation section. And there was an example of before and after rewrite, if you remember. Um, that's sort of an approach. So it has to be well written so that when I'm scanning it, it's Keanu Reeves brainstem simple why I would want this in terms of its benefits, its value, how it's going to make my, my life better. If you're forcing me to read a paragraph of text, don't bother. It's a campaign landing page. You want to make it forehead smack in the obvious. And testimonials and reviews, valuable content. People like testimonials and reviews. They like the feeling that other people have had bought this before, tried it before. So naming, you know, pr pr providing named testimonials, named reviews can be very, very powerful in the sense of encouraging people to convert. So this is a generic design for a campaign landing page. It doesn't have to look like this, but it, it, it's a reasonable start in the sense that you have your logo. You have your product name, which should be directly related to whatever someone just clicked on to get here. So the language and the design and the aesthetic used in the advert should be reflected in the landing page, because if, if it looked radically different, you'd freak people out. So again, this is something we covered in paid search, the fact that the landing page should reinforce the message of the advert, whatever that message was, both linguistically and visually. So a nice looking headline, a powerful headline that relates to whatever someone just clicked on to get here. Product image, if you want additional product images, you could have them here, of course, little clickable thumbnails. Here you have a bulleted list, most likely, of benefits, reasons to buy, et cetera, et cetera. And then you have a call to action. Or if there was a form, you could have a couple of fields and then a submit button associated with that form. I'm not, you know, depending on the complexity of the landing page of what you're selling, you may not, you may not need a testimonial. If you do, then you, know, you could place it here. You could include it here if you wanted, et cetera, et cetera. But that, that basic model of headline, image, sales message, go button, that structure works pretty well for product landing, for, for product pages. If you think about Amazon, that's basically the way every e-commerce site is, 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 is built, that sort of logical, um, lo that logical structure of headline, image, details, benefits, bullets, go button. That's consistent, so just use that on this. And, uh, and as you can see, also no navigation, all been stripped out, maybe just a couple here, such as if it's relevant, delivery perhaps, or privacy policy, if, if, if that's relevant. So the bare minimum of links you need um, for either legal or to answer users' questions. But apart from that, you strip everything else out. 
So, just for a moment, uh, bearing in mind everything we've talked about in terms of you know, com communicating structure, aesthetics, there's the design principles, just have a look at this um, landing page for a moment and then consider the critique that, that, that you might offer of it. And then when we come back, I'll offer, I'll offer you my critique and then, um, well, you won't be able to tell me yours, but you know, I'll just imagine that you agree with me um, and then we can move on. Okay, that's great. Have a go. Splendid. Here we are looking at this landing page um, by a big company called Web Trends. Uh, the reason I had to lean over to read that was because dark blue on black doesn't really work, does it? So legibility, fail. And if it's your brand, epic fail, frankly. Um, the big problem I have with this black is that it completely separates logically and visually this area of the page from the bottom area of the page. There's very little, I mean, there's that little strip joining them, you could argue, but that's very, very subtle. Realistically, this is just marooned. And because reading white on black isn't particularly pleasant, that is unlikely to get read as well. So you've got a big mess, big real estate there, I would argue, potentially wasted, without any good reason. There's no reason that area has to be black whatsoever. It just, it just seems to be a random design decision made for no particularly good reason that I, that I can figure out. On top of that, let's now look at here. We have, this is a nice element. And this, I think, a bit, a bit like the call to action earlier, where there's a slight overlay, a slight interruption of the visual balance here. You kind of expect this to be this little icon here, that, that little arrow pointing down. It breaks the, breaks the horizontal line nicely and draws the eye onto the form. So I like that, personally. The submit button here, that looks a little bit, um, well, it's not obvious, frankly, is it? It's got no color. It's got no nice little arrow. There's nothing saying, I am a call to action button. I am what you press once you've done this form. Again, I'm not suggesting people won't notice it. It's just, you know, why would you not want your submit button, your, your submit button to stand out and draw further attention to this area? I certainly think that that's something that one consider. Um, I'm not crazy about the idea of using the word submit. I think submit is something that one probably does you know, in a mixed martial arts contest when someone's choking you out. Apart from that, I'm probably applying or downloading or sending or I'm doing something more relevant to my task rather than submitting. So in terms of naming of button, I would, I would challenge whether or not we can come up with something better, more relevant to what the audience thinks they're going to do or the benefit they're going to get. And then here we are in terms of copywriting. We have a paragraph of text. I'm not a big fan of paragraphs of text. I like things to be scannable, bulleted lists but then uh, have a look at the web writing course and see what they say about that. Here we do have a bulleted list, so that's all well and good. One might consider wh you know, whether or not we want some consistency between image alignment either on the right or the left rather than bouncing around, which might make the page slightly awkward to scan quickly. I, I, th I think there's something to be said for that, but even so. So we can see how there are things to consider on this page in terms of um, design decisions that I would argue don't make a lot of sense, might make the page slightly harder to understand, scan, less attractive, all the points I made. Um, so there would be, okay, so why did you do it this way? Is there a good reason or is it just because you were bored? And often, frankly, it's because people are just bored. Graphic designers are just bored. They don't have a really strong usability background. They don't realize that you've now just cut the page in two. No one's going to look at that. They're going to go straight down here. This isn't particularly scannable anyway. All the things we talked about. So again, it's just, you know, in a nice, pleasant, mutually loving karma, incense, candle burning kind of a way, having a dialogue about, you know, let's consider the usability and see if we can't improve this.